This is The Relaxed Male, a show that comes to you each week helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host, certified coach, Brian Goodwin, as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey, man. Hello, and welcome to The Relaxed Mail. All right. So today, we're mixing things up a lot from what we I have been doing for the past several <laughs> several episodes. Uh, first time in a long while, we have actually got a guest on the show. And our guest today is Andy Heller. And he has a, a book that is just designed just strictly for you. If you're going through the thick of it and you're you're fighting that divorce and stuff like that, this book is is just going to be right up your alley and will help change the how you actually are looking at what the divorce is. is. And Andy has a has an interesting story and about as to why this book came about. So, but anyhow, before we uh, go any further down the road, let's go ahead and let's bring Andy on and uh, let Andy uh, kind of explain what's what's happening. Andy, how are you Brian, doing today? Oh, Brian, I'm doing great. And um, particularly, I'm excited to talk to your audience because your audience is me <laughs> as I went through my own divorce. So I'll go right into my story really quickly um, so that then leave as much time as possible for you and I to, to talk about tips and, and, and ways to help people out. So, right. um, uh, guys, I am just like you. I, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a normal guy who had a very challenging divorce and, um, I run successful businesses, uh, a number of businesses. I wrote two real estate investing books 20 years ago and I swore I would never write another book <laughs> until I went through my own divorce. So the story that led to this book and what this book is trying to do is as follows. So when I'm stressed, everybody, I just take notes. It's my coping mechanism. When my mom was passing away, the notes I was writing when she was in hospice became an article that got covered in five newspapers in the country, in this country in the Mother's Day after she passed. I'm going through my own divorce. I'm taking these notes. And a little bit about me, guys. I'm a very compromise-oriented man. I consider myself to be a reasonable person, a, 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 a fair thinker, and um, uh, I would think that I would have the tools myself to be able to make good decisions along this divorce. So I'm taking, I'm writing these notes and everything, and uh, my ex-wife and I are meeting with this co-parent counselor, and there was a lot of other dynamics that I'm not going to get into that made my divorce challenging. And the co-parent counselor says, you know what, guys, you each have a lot of stress. Why don't you go and get with a therapist? It can't hurt. So I said, you know what? Why not? So I said, but I want a therapist who specifically worked with divorced men. So I, I interviewed a couple and I found this lady. He, she was amazing. So over the next couple of years, things would happen with my uh, soon to be ex and eventually ex. <clears throat> and I would walk into uh, her office and I say, OK, this is what happened. But don't worry. I thought it through like a reasonable compromise oriented guy like I am. And I, here's what I'm going to do. And so she would go into her therapy speak. Well, Andy, it's really good that you think that way. and You've thought it through. But that's not what you're going to do. You're going to do the opposite. <laughs> and I would sit here and I listen, uh, uh, Brian, her advice <laughs> would come out of her mouth. And I'm like, oh, my God. Once I heard the advice come out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. I was amazed at how often my instincts were wrong. And this is a very powerful point, guys. And this was the genesis for writing this book. I am a reasonable guy. I, I, I don't get uh, uh, off emotionally and uh, typically. Um, I tend to try to look at both sides. And I was so affected by the number of times that my gut instincts were not only wrong, sometimes they were 180 degrees way away from what you were supposed to do. And I can give you a few examples, but, mm -hmm. um, but um, the point that I walked away with is I wasn't aware the degree at which I was emotionally compromised that affected my own decision-making. And then another few years passed by. And I, and, and by the way, the other thing about me guys, when I'm stressed, I read a lot. And I don't sleep, sorry, I don't sleep a lot. So I, I read a lot of other books about divorce. And I'm a believer that even the worst book, 
if you can take one or two tips that help you, it's worth the read. But right. The, Absolutely. Yeah. But I saw, I looked at my notes now, like three or four years into it. And after having all these experiences with the therapist, having left her office with a different plan than when I went in there. And I looked at my notes and like, oh, my God, I got an outline here for a book of best practices about how to get through a divorce and not just get through it, guys. But part of the divorce really starts after the divorce when you have to co-parent effectively with somebody you couldn't live with. <laughs> and so right. my, my book is different and fills a gap in a divorce space. It certainly uh, could say it's geared more towards men because I am a man. And the book deals with 46 tips and strategies of which most of you will be affected by at least half of these situations. And it gives you a, a, a strategy for dealing with these situations on day one, not on day 300. And the big last thing I'll say before I pass the baton back to you, Brian, my sense, my sense of divorce is, is exper- an experiential journey. During this journey, you're going to do some things very well, some things kind of okay, and some things horribly wrong. But the problem <laughs> right. is for we men, we typically, if we go through this journey, it's typically only once, sometimes twice. But you need those, you need the tips on day one, not after you've made the mistakes. So by arming the divorcee with the tips on day one, the goal is to make better decisions as these situations arise. And uh, I'm really humbled by my book. So let me just say one last thing. Um, This book is not about Andy Heller's divorce. Who the heck am I? What I did, everybody, is I began a process of eight years of research. Um, I interviewed field experts. Um, I interviewed uh, uh, divorce attorneys. I interviewed uh, co-parent counselors, children's therapists, uh, uh, divorce therapists, um, um, uh, mediators. And I interviewed dozens of couples who've gone through challenging divorces and landed in good places. So my role as a businessman who runs successful businesses and wrote other books I organize all this content into a basically a manual for best practices of how to land in a place where you are healthy, your ex is healthier, mm-hmm. and most important, where you don't screw up your kids, guys. Because <laughs> right. your actions and how you deal with your ex and how you deal with your own emotions, how you make your own decisions are going to affect the wiring that your kids will deal with for the next 40, 50 years. So. Without further ado, Brian, that's my story. Um, and, and I will say, even though my book is fairly new, I'm really humbled. If you look at the reviews, everybody, particularly from the therapy community, it's been very complimentary. And I do feel that I filled a gap that hopefully can help a lot of people um, with their own divorces. Well, and I'm, I have, the, I would believe that that's something that uh, you, you have been able to ap- actually accomplish is because of the the fact that you one you put so much so much of the effort into it now what is the biggest issue that like when you were going through your divorce mm-hmm. what was the big problem that was really really hounding you what was one of the those big things where you thought you were needing to act one way and it turned out to be the exact opposite well um the biggest problem that i find and this is not just my own divorce. This is with all the other interview interviews are to, is communication. Absolutely, hands down, is communication. And in my own divorce, there was a point, and I'm not at that point any longer. And I think it's due to good work that I've done, and also my ex wife. Um, I felt at one point I would say up, she would say down. I would say right, I was she would say left. Whatever, if if I owned an idea or a suggestion for the children. The answer would be no. And the challenge we all face is that we we co-parenting needs our children's lives don't pause for three, four years while you right. and your ex-wife reach you a point where you can worked out. Exactly. Cor- correct. So so a lot of my book doesn't just deal with communication uh, uh, during the divorce process, but also after. Um, and one of the points I would make to all of the, your listeners is this. <clears throat> Probably the number one comment I heard 
when interviewing men and when interviewing women who've been divorced was she won't do this. She doesn't do that. He can't do this. He won't do that. In mm-hmm. other words, everybody, you cannot control the actions or steps taken by your former spouse. No. The only person you can control is yourself. So my book deals with specifically unilateral steps that you can take until your ex reaches the point where she cools it and mm-hmm. can deal with you in a better frame of mind. And the good news is, Brian, and I'll tell all your listeners is, that time typically in most divorces does arrive. And a lot of my book deals with reminding you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but you mm-hmm. need to be able to co-parent in a manner where, you, where, you know, you don't screw up your kids and also you keep, you keep your own sanity until the situation relaxes. So a lot of my tips you'll notice, and this is one reason why I think I've got such great reviews from the therapeutic community. They deal with steps that we can take ourselves that are not dependent on a reciprocal action from our spouse or former spouse, right. because we simply cannot depend on that. Yeah, no, you, you're, that's something where you're, if you're expecting the other person to, <clears throat> to rise up to your, a, a level that you want them to rise, they're going to disappoint. I mean, that's yep. one of the things I, I try helping my guys with uh, is when it comes to, like you were saying, when it comes to being able to control a person, uh, you're going to get more of a psychological reactance from them. If you say, tell them, hey, we need to need to pick up Joey on on Thursday. I'm going to pick him up on Friday. You know, they're going to come up with a reason why they can't do it on Thursday and they have to do it on Friday. They're going to try to do the exact opposite. They're going to want to want to instantly fight. It's that whole don't think of a pink elephant. You're going to think of a pink elephant because, you know, that's our mind just saying wanting to to make sure that we have to prove that we have a free association of, of thinking. Because, yeah, if we uh, if if the person who we believe is the source of our pain is telling us to do something, yeah, we're instantly going to want to do the opposite, which is often causes more, more pain for us than than sticking it to uh, to the other person. So, yeah, you know, your the, your comment there, Brian, is a great segue. If you allow me to give one of the tips in the book, no, please, um, yeah. So, so you talk, uh, so you talked about, you know, you suggest something about, you know, Joey needs to be picked up on this time, and because you're suggesting it, the response you, is going to be negative. So, one of the, the the angles of my book that is not in any other book is I am not a therapist. I am not a co-parent counselor, or a mediator. I'm not a divorce attorney. I'm a businessman. Mm-hmm. And in in business, everybody, <clears throat> and I'm also a Dale Carnegie disciple, there are business skills for high conflict situations. Yep. And I got together with therapists and said, okay, what about if we use this business skill for this divorce challenge? And the feedback I got was just, you got to run with that. You got to write about that, Andy. So to your example, so how would you deal with that situation? I talk about that exact situation in my book. So. um Let's say I, Andy Heller, I've got my former spouse, whatever I own, whatever suggestion I offer, mm-hmm. it will be negatively re- reacted to for a period of time. So how do I accomplish, how do I reach uh, uh, agreements and decisions with my ex on co parenting when you have that dynamic? Well, one of the business skills that we talk about in the book, and again, I'm going to abbreviate here, but I got a, a, an entire chapter about how to do this is you've got to change the texture of how you communicate everybody. Instead of saying to your ex what you want to do, state the problem and ask your ex to solve it. You will find very often she will come back with uh, a suggestion that's fairly close to what you wanted, but you allow her to own the suggestion. And even if she doesn't come far enough, she, she, she takes three steps there, but it's a 10 step process. Right. You can come back and say, wow, you know, I like this part, but I still 
am unsure. I have a question here. And you create a question again without guys. Most guys have played poker. So you're not going to divulge your hand. You're just going to keep stating questions. And this is a very, very um, uh, uh, popular business communication strategy in yeah. high conflict situations. And it, it it's it's one of the was the funnest chapters to write, Brian, because it's extremely effective. The your spouse cannot object to your idea and your preference if she doesn't know it. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she ain't gonna she's not going to if if she doesn't know what uh, what your uh suggestion is going to be, she's you know, she's got to make up her own mind. Now she may drive herself up the wall thinking, you know, how what's he what's his end game and but you know, so many guys avoid their avoid the discomfort of a, of a uh of a discussion. Yep. And I think, uh, well, and the, uh, with your, with you doing all your, the research you've done, what do you think is actually the biggest cause of so many of the divorces these days? Oh, well, that's, that's even a deeper question. Um, uh, I would say two things. One is um, I, I don't think that relationships have all of a sudden got, unhealthier than they did in our parents generation right but but we do live in uh, an age where um divorce doesn't have the stigma it used to so the uh the the couple who is in a unhealthy relationship a generation ago they're more they were more likely to just stay in that and stay unhappy where today we're we're in a generation where people act on it I think that's a big reason. The second is simply um, uh, there's a lot more stress involved these days. Uh, and I think when people are stressed, um, it's, it's tougher to maintain healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's just a bigger question and bigger issue in general. And that's just a society that, that, that we live in. Um, but in the, the therapeutic community's position on uh, when to stay together it is very, very um, uh, concise, specific, and um, uh, it doesn't vary from therapist to therapist. If you're in a relationship that is unhealthy, it's, it's better that you, for the children, that you separate, then you stay together and try to cope, try to parent together if the children are going up in a household where mom and dad don't get along. And that right. wasn't the case. And, and that probably is your answer, Brian. That wasn't the case 50 years ago. All right. Uh, well, but what is again? There, there's, there's a a a word in there that seems really subjective to to just what a person is thinking. Uh, what is what is a a marriage that that is that is toxic? We'll just you go ahead. I, I I try to avoid the the word toxic just because. It, we're not snakes. We're, we don't have any type. We don't carry any type of venom. So we're not a toxic creature. But the the whole unhealthy marriage or unhealthy relationship is very very subjective because you know what I think, and that's uh, that's one of the things I I run with uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of the guys is. Everything that's going on is based upon strictly your thoughts of what that certain uh, circumstance is at the moment. Fair. So, you know, if your wife's yelling at you, well, is she yelling at you because she's wanting to hurt your feelings or is she yelling at you because of, you know, she's just frustrated or she and she yelling at you because she has her own set of thoughts that are have irritated her? And she's just striking out at the closest thing that she has to to lash out at, and that just happens to be you. You know, is that a is that an unhealthy relationship, or is that just you know people being people? And so, that, and that's why I was kind of asking about why is there so many so much a divorce? It almost seems as if people are stopping 
or actually seems to be diving more into almost codependent relationships than they are do, having a a healthy interdependent uh, relationship. Yeah, let me speak to that. First okay. of all, it, it's it's really interesting that you bring that up, and I think that that is extremely fair for your audience. Um, so my book is about navigating through a healthy divorce and also co-parenting after the divorce effectively, right. as well as taking care of yourself in the process. But the first chapter of my book is about answering that exact question. Oh, okay. Do you Should you go down that path or not? And what we try to help everybody do in that chapter is to make a distinction. Is my relationship stale or is my relationship broken? Right. And the honest answer is that chapter, while I think it's a great chapter, mm-hmm. it's not possible to, to read that chapter and definitively make that conclusion because every relationship is different. And to your point, your choice of words is perfect. Uh, uh, Brian, it is subjective. So, and it's above my pay grade to say that. So the right thing to do, if a person is not sure, is try to get into uh, uh, a marriage counselor right. and, and figure that out. But what that chapter tries to do is get you thinking, is my relationship likely broken or is my relationship likely stale in need of some help? Right. Um, okay. Yeah, and there it is also very common if you're in with if you're with somebody for you know 20 years or so, you're you're in the process or almost done with raising your children that you may feel more like roommates. Mm-hmm. Um that's not necessarily a basis for ending a relationship guys. No, no, actually, um uh the roommate syndrome is actually really a powerful indicator that you're at a precipice where you can actually grow. If you can actually allow yourself to, to develop and mature just a little bit more, you'll actually be able to, to evolve into a better type of relationship that you never knew was actually even possible. Yeah. And I, I, I'm of the belief and I speak to that in, 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 in the book um, that, you know, we, even the most reasonably minded um, uh, em- emotionally sensitive men, um, we don't have that skill set. Um, and I, uh, the one thing I'll say in right in right in this book, having gone through my own divorce, Brian, mm-hmm. I was never like a, a this massive believer in therapy. No. Um, uh, I did I did do a one eighty at when I saw uh, two things: what a really great therapist how helpful she was to me. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm a pretty reasonable thinking man. Um, And secondly, um, we did put our children in therapy Um, and this is highly recommended, but not done a lot. And I I will tell you um, your children can really benefit from that. And we can't be both disruptors in their, to their lives. Divorce is a disruption to their lives. Mm -hmm. And we can't be a disruptor and also the healer. Okay. We can be there for them, but that's, that's where um, a therapist where they can go and feel safe. Um, they can, uh, they can really help these children land in a good place uh, right. and be less affected by the divorce of their parents. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned that you've got several different tips. Let's say, Wife has your your dear darling beautiful bride of uh, fifteen years uh, decides wakes you up at two o'clock in the morning to have that talk. She doesn't love you anymore. Is what she is what she's saying. What's the, what's something that a guy can can do at that moment? Well, um, that's a really difficult conversation. Uh, he's not going to go right back to bed. That's for darn sure, Brian. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, nope. What I would do, what I would suggest is you need to ask your, well, first of all, you need to get a sense of where your head and your heart is at. Okay. If you can still see yourself with this person building a life um, and you've got children, so you're vested, then I would go back to her with some questions. Okay, um, I, uh, that's not an easy thing for me to listen to. 
what are, where is your head at? Are you just are you dead set that we need to move and and end end our marriage? Do you want to uh, meet with a marriage counselor and see if this is salvageable? Um, if you do, I'm I'm game. Um, you you've got to. So she may be crying out for help or just saying, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. You need to get, ask her to be more specific. All right. Where, okay. Now you've, you, you've made this statement and you've got a few different paths. Which path do you want to go down? Uh, dear, do you want to just, all right. Are we going to call, call it a day? Um, are we going to want to see if there's something there? And I'm going to give you something that I do talk about in my book. Okay. Um, this is really important in that think all of you think about your your own your own parents' marriages. I don't know if there's any adult that doesn't dissect the marriage of their parents when they are adults. Your children will that do that also one day. So many people who just who want to end the marriage, they are in a hurry. What I would recommend is just take your time here for a second. Because your actions today will be will affect your children for the rest of their lives. Right. So, so don't press the fast forward button. Just move forward at a, at a slower pace. So, one of my advice I give, even if you are ninety percent certain, or your ex wife or your wife, sorry, is ninety percent certain that she wants to end the marriage. I believe it's in everybody's interest, particularly your children. If you go to therapy for three or six months before you announce this to your children, and I'll tell you why. When you have that talk with your children, everybody, it's going to be a difficult thing for them to hear, whether they're six years old or 16 years old. Okay. Absolutely. And when they're adults, they're going to look back on the end of their parents' marriage. Just imagine two different conversations with your adult children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was done with mom, so we just ended the marriage. Or yeah, I was done with dad, we just ended the marriage. Versus, you know, guys, our marriage really wasn't healthy, but it was so important to us that we exalt, turn over every stone before because we love you so much that we committed ourselves to therapy before at the end of the therapeutic process coming to the conclusion that the best thing for everybody, including our children, was to raise you guys in two households. What what will land on your children is a this powerful point. Okay. That the 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 the, the family unit was so important that mom and dad committed to therapy before reaching the decision that it was not possible to repair the marriage. Versus we just walked away. Right. So so even if the result is the same as what you believed it to, would be before the therapy that the marriage would end, mm -hmm. the fact that you committed to therapy is going to be a very powerful point to your children about the importance you placed on raising them in one household. So yeah. so that is a, you know, and, and again, even if you're, pretty darn sure that's the right path. I'm telling you right now that when your children are adults, if you, at, if you tried marriage therapy before you reach that decision, that's going to be something that, that will be very, that a strong impression you'll be giving your children. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, because if you're just, uh, we, we gave it a try. It didn't work. We're, we're splitting up. Yeah. I can, I can definitely see how that can leave a, a an impression upon the um, on the kids involved well or if, if if they try try us out a little bit more and you know all of a sudden we don't work are they just gonna you know toss us i mean there's a lot of fear that you're gonna end up instilling into the into the minds of the, of the kids so i i can i can see how at least showing them hey we tried a whole bunch of stuff out that um uh, to see if there was any chance that we could actually put our, our pieces back together and it didn't. And so, yeah, we're, pro we're progressing through on, on the divorce. And so with the, uh, with that, uh, 
that talk, what happens when you have a, let's just call it a, a hostile spouse through the, the divorce process. And you've got the, the, the spouse who is just, well, I mean, both, uh, both, uh, both parties usually wind up somewhere along the way being just stuck in the, in the depths of scarcity mindset, Mm -hmm. whether it's uh, she's running off with all my money or he's running off with all her money or there, or, you know, who's going to get the house, you know, and, and just trying to hash the, 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 what's, what was accumulated through their, through their relationship is now starting to, uh, trying to get divvied up and one's trying to get, make sure that they have enough, uh, enough of those resources. What, how, what is a tip for, for men who are facing somebody who is just nothing but scarcity mindset at the moment? Okay. So I'm going to give a great tip. But I'm also going to say in the book, one of the the other things I bring in. So I I think your question can there have two parts to it, Mm -hmm. right? The general hostility, which I'll speak to, and the inability to get things accomplished. And then you talked about trying to get a deal done. All right. So the book has a chapter on negotiation skills that, and this is where I bring in business skills that can help you negotiate to a fast and fair um uh, uh conclusion which right, will preserve moment. preserve your funds right okay so that's the an whole entire, Dale Carnegie win-win right, situation right, right right and there's also some the some um some business some specific sales tools used in negotiations okay. that will be very helpful to your audience <clears throat> but in terms of the hostility so let's let's make an assumption with this conversation that you you're the listener you're the more reasonable of the two Okay. So again, this is another. Yeah, that would be, again, that would be a very subjective. uh... (laughs) Right, right. So there's, there's another wonderful human relations principle here. And that is people who are unreasonable, they don't see themselves as unreasonable. They see you as being unreasonable. So acknowledging that, I'm going to help you guys use that to your advantage. In the book, I talk about creating a tiebreaker so that an unreasonable person cannot adversely affect um, the ability for you to, to co-parent your children effectively, and the unreasonable person will have less effect on your own stress. So right. the number way, one way to control this, everybody, is to in- insist on a tiebreaker mechanism okay. in, the, in the MSA document. All right. The gotcha. the best way to do that is something called a special master. All right. Um, you can also take a co-parent counselor and give her or the special master an order of items that they're allowed to rule on. And the 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 couple, a divorced couple, they are obligated to adhere to that decision. This does a, a number of things. The beauty about a special master. Okay. Is once you give the special master the order that they can rule on, you only pay for what you use. So if you have a high conflict uh, former spouse, you may be dealing with a special master for six or seven issues a year, and each one pays for that. So there's there's also a built in incentive not to not to to try to resolve <laughs> not it. To do it. Yeah. All right, but if you end up improving your situation, you might deal with one issue every two years. So you it, it's a pay as you go or pay as you use arrangement. Okay. So this is just so I can understand and make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. That special master is almost is kind of like a uh, concierge arbiter, I guess would be another way to kind of look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what it okay, does, okay. Brian, is it keeps you from going to court over things that are not worthy of spending yeah. 10,000 bucks. <laughs> So you spend 500 instead of 10,000 guys. But the other thing that it does is it keeps your sanity. Okay. Because if you have an unreasonable former spouse for, and, and, and it takes her a couple years to, to land in a place where you guys can work together, during those two years, something comes up and you need to reach agreement. You've got the peace of mind of knowing if she's unreasonable, you're going to be able to get an agreement. 
Oh, she, wow. And she's okay. going to be, she's going to have to adhere to it. The special master, uh, and I talk about this a lot in my book, I would not sign an MSA unless you have a tiebreaker mechanism inserted, such as a special master, that keeps you from returning to court. And the peace of mind that you will have, knowing you have this, is like the insurance policy. If you live in uh, Florida, you, you, you actually have flood insurance. So you're not going to worry if, if, God forbid, that y- your home gets flooded, you can rebuild. This is, right. this is insurance. The other thing it does is it creates a witness. All right. right. So if you, if you're, if you end up going to court and your former spouse remains unreasonable, the special master creates a track record that will help you achieve your goals if you have to return to court. But again, the goal is not going. Um, and yeah. So if you deal with an unreasonable, if you're dealing with an unreasonable spouse or former spouse, mm-hmm. in certain a witness and tiebreaker mechanism is the absolute best advice I can give you. And that is discussed in great detail in the book. And, and the beauty about, the, so the reason why I talked about the, the, the human relations principle where the, the person who is unreasonable doesn't see him or herself as unreasonable. My point there, guys, is that your spouse is likely to say, absolutely, I'd love this because she sees it as a way to control you. Right. Not the other way around. So it's actually one of the areas where um, you can go to your spouse, say, look, we're not reaching agreement a lot. I'm sure neither of us want to go to court and spend thousands of dollars once we separated. All right. So let's set, let's interview a, co- a, a special master and and create a tiebreaker mechanism so that if you don't think I'm being reasonable, again, you don't talk about her. If you don't right. think I'm being reasonable, you can force a decision and we don't go to court. So you're very likely to find that they will be open to it because it's a way to control you when you're doing it to control her. <laughs> wow. And it's, I've, I've actually not ever heard of anything like a special using a special master or a, uh, or an SMA of any type of anything along those lines. I'm, and I've got, uh, actually, I, I always, I, I joke all the time that, uh, if I ever do was to go through and get a divorce, I am screwed because my wife's dad is a divorce lawyer. So, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> so the, <laughs> one of the reasons why I enjoyed writing this book, Brian, is that I, I, I probably read a dozen books before I, I wrote my book. Right. Not one mentioned a special master and, um, it's one of the most powerful suggestions and underused suggestions. Now, the last thing I'll say on the topic from my end is that a special master is typically a trained mediator, okay. a divorce attorney, or a co-parent counselor. So he or she has the skill sets necessary to reach a decision fast. Now, you can also, all these things, all, how these decisions are, are, are reached, you and your ex-wife can come up with a structure. That minimizes your cost. So, for example, for every conflict, you can decide that the special master will speak to each person for 10 minutes, no more, or will receive one email and rule on that. So what you're ensuring, guys, is that you're not going to spend a lot of money and you get your decisions uh, uh, reached. Mm -hmm. And depending on how much money each party has to play with, again, the, the, the special master creates an incentive to be more reasonable because it's a lot better to reach your agreement with a phone call or an email than in a meeting with a special master. But yeah. again, if you look at the, the, the one of the comments that I would hear so often when I interviewed divorcees is that oh, I just capitulate because I don't want to end back in court it costs too much money. Yeah. Well, you know, capitulation guys and, and, and ladies, it has a tremendous cost. If you're dealing with an unreasonable spouse and you may be capitulating to um, a position that's not in the best interest of your children. So the special master gives you an ability for a, a two, three hundred dollars of reaching a resolution that is um, uh, 
that both parties are obligated to honor. You get the resolution fast and, um, and it's, it's pretty much stress, stress free. Yeah. No, I, I would have to agree. I mean, that would, to be able to just take that, uh, take that and be able to just hand it over to some type of mediator and uh, arbiter and just let them decide, you know, all right, you know, I've heard this side, this side, <laughs> both of y'all are, are boneheads. Uh, <laughs> this is probably what you need to do. Uh, so what is now we're getting, getting close to, uh, to wrapping this up. What are some, what are some other uh, great tips that uh, you think I have completely, totally missed. And uh, you, though you, I'm sure you probably have set it up, teed it up perfectly, and I've just uh, 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 blew right past them. Is there, what are what are some other tips that uh, guys going through a divorce could uh, could benefit from? First of all, you haven't missed a thing, and um, Brian. I think that for men, having a resource like your podcast is um, invaluable. Okay. And what I would say to all of you is, is, um, utilize resources like Brian's and like my book, um, and, and try to shut out all the other noise and, and make these decisions that can hopefully make things easier for you. So I'll, I'll give a, a couple of great tips. Um, so my book title is Take the High Road, Divorce with Compassion for Yourself and Your Family. The title infers compromise and, on some of the podcasts I've done, Brian, um, there's been a, a suggestion that that means given in. It's actually the opposite, guys. There's a direct relationship between conflict and financial cost and stress. So the fewer conflict points you have with your wife right now as you end your union or, your, or even post-divorce, the more money you're going to save, the less stress you're going to have the better your life will be. So taking the high road actually will save you money uh, and save you stress. Um, I'll give you now, I'll pivot to a specific example of one of my favorite, and this was actually one of the impetuses for me to write the book, because I talked about how I would march into my therapist's office with my plan to deal with something. Mm -hmm. I would march out with marching orders that were sometimes 180 degrees. <laughs> Yeah, from what I plan to do. So a great example is there was a because so in a joint custody arrangement, I've got my time, she's got her time. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the structure's set up, but then life intervenes and you need to swap. Okay. Right. Somebody gets sick or and Edna comes in town or whatever, whatever. All right. So I asked for something and my ex-wife a, a, a switch in schedule, and she said no. We were actually, I think, still married at that point. We hadn't finalized the divorce, but we still had a custodial calendar. Right. She asked for something that was a reasonable request. I said, uh, I'll get back to you because I had my appointment with my therapist. I walk in there. I said, I'm going to, here's what, here's what I've done. She said, no, here's what she's done. Ask me, I'm going to say just agree to my request and I'll agree to yours, which as a businessman, it sounds fair. Tit sounds for tat, fair. right? Sounds fair. My therapist said, no, you're not Andy. You're going <laughs> to call her. Say, you're going to, she'll you're, dig her heels. She in just, basically I, 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 guys, I felt like a human voodoo doll. <laughs> and if you can imagine, like I was all excited. I went in there. I knew what I was going to do. And I was waiting for that affirmation from my therapist said, well thought through, Andy. That's a smart tactic, and she just burst my bubble. But <laughs> it, but it, it's but she was right, and I listened to her. So 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 let me. I'll finish the story. So she All said, right. and Andy, any reasonable request that you are given, if you can accommodate it without much difficulty, your answer is going to be yes, and you're not going to link your request of her to her request of you. And I was all like, but, 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 no, Andy, just do it. You will find at some point, probably in about a year to a year and a half, her behavior will begin to change. Do not link, just let her hear you say yes, because if it's in the children's interest. 
The law of reciprocity. Exactly. Correct. So I went and I said yes to her request without getting what I wanted. I said yes to other requests. I said yes to other requests. And I went back to my therapist and I said, you know what? You were wrong. It took only six months. <laughs> and and <laughs> Brian, and I, I, I got to say to your all your listeners, at that time, my ex-wife and I, and she'll say the same thing about me, that we were oil and water. I said right. She said left. I said up. She said down. And the, the constant yeses from me to her reasonable request resulted in a change. Okay. And we can't, I can't tell you in this podcast, if your change will be in six months, your change will be in 12 months. What I can tell you is this. My therapist was right. You can't link requests. If her requests of you are, 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 you can accommodate, they're reasonable, and it's going to benefit the children you need to just say yes. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. And and, and this is a great example <clears throat> of where my gut instincts were horribly wrong. And this is the type of advice I try to give people because some of what you're going to want to do or need to do mm-hmm. is not going to be consistent with your gut instincts. Um, and that was one of the most powerful points I learned in writing this book is that I didn't realize, Brian, that I, and if I sound like a reasonable guy, I was the same reasonable guy when I got divorced. Right. But I didn't realize the degree that, at which my, uh, I was emotionally compromised and my decision making process was off. And then finally, this was a new space for me. I'd mm-hmm. only been divorced once and I didn't have, I didn't have history to lean on. And the last thing I'll say, guys, is that if you talk to 10 people who've been divorced, for advice, you're going to get 10 different sets of advice. So <laughs> going to your friends and family for counsel is not the right thing to do. It's only going to give you a headache and be confusing. You've got to be careful with where you get your guidance from. That's why podcasts like Brian, books like mine, a, a crackerjack therapist who's worked with divorced men, those are great uh, people to go to, great resources to go to, to be able to make these right decisions until you, you and your ex-wife land in a place, and you will get there, where emotions, the, the most uh, powerful emotions kind of dissipate, mm-hmm. and you're feeling more relaxed. And, you know, it used to be when I would have to call my ex-wife, I would kind of start hyperventilating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've remarried, Brian, and my the, the I get grief from my current wife because I call my ex-wife all the time when things pop up with the kids. And we have, we actually, the crazy thing is, I think, and she'd say the same thing about me. We probably are <clears throat> co parents and our children healthier today than when we're married. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's, but guys, it, it's a process. And I can't tell you if your process will be six months or two years. I can tell you that typically the endpoint is easier, but you got to focus on unilateral steps that you and only you can take right. to get you to that point where you land in a good place and your children are less affected. Um, and that's what I hopefully I've done with, with my book here. And the last thing I'll say about my own story, guys, is I, I, I run successful businesses. I, I, I'm not on the circuit teaching about divorce. This isn't my job. I wrote this book as a pay it forward. Um, to try to help uh, men and and women get through what is oftentimes the most traumatic and stressful point in their lives. Right. And and we need a roadmap. We need a roadmap to get through that process and land in a place where we can co-parent without screwing up our children. Yep. And that roadmap is, is definitely this book. I mean, there's just so many, so many different, uh, different aspects that, this helps out with, I mean, all the different principles that you have applied in there and, you know, being able to talk to the, to all those different types of, of experts that have been touched by the, the damaging winds of a divorce. And I, I call divorce damaging, I, though I've known several people who have gotten better because they have gotten out of that, gone through that divorce. Um, 
And so it's, and it is possible. I mean, my, my wife has always been in awe of like my mom, my mom and uh, my dad were acted like best of friends every time they saw each other at, while hers was more of a, uh, more of an emotional based uh, or her, her parents who are also divorced had a very emotionally based uh, interaction with each other. And it was just, one was the fire, didn't know which one was going to be the fire and which one was going to be the gasoline, but usually <laughs> seemed to be the one was going to be one and the other was going to be it, uh, be the opposite. And there were several times where they would just, they would see each other and just blow up. And then, you know, and it was almost expected to that that's what was going to happen. And so, yeah, you can, you can have a, a great life after a divorce. Um, you can, have a great you can still be an an incredible parent after a divorce and you get your spouse will also be a great and wonderful parent after the divorce too and take the high road uh is a is a great roadmap on how to do that what pitfalls to avoid where where's that boulder that uh, you've got to watch out for you know there's those places that you're going to trip up places that you could fa- possibly fall those are all listed out here in in Andy's in any Andy, Andy's book so got uh Andy where can people uh find you if uh if they're wanting to get some more information about the book sure the Probably we ninety percent of our purchases are on Amazon, guys. So go to Amazon and you Google um, Andy Heller H E L L E R and take the high road. My book will come up. Um, uh, we have a website uh, www.takethehighroaddivorce.com. There we have our Facebook page and Instagram and links to other podcasts, and we'll post yours on there, Brian. And right. those are the easiest ways to get the book and stay in touch with me. Um, so, and, and again, guys, this is not my job. Um, I've done this to help the countless men and women who go through what can be the most challenging uh, part of their lives. And, you know, um, you mentioned roadmap. Uh, one thing I'll say that I'm really, really humbled by is uh, I spoke to another author um, and I asked her if she could read my book uh, in, before I published it, guys, and give me uh, a couple sentences uh, that I could put on the cover. Um, she wrote Joint Custody with a Jerk, uh, Julia Ross, and um, she comes back to me and she said, uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So, OK, well, Andy, your book is the most amazing book for divorce. Can I write your foreword? So oh, wow. Julie Ross, Julie Ross wrote my foreword and she said, Andy's book is the GPS. When you're lost uh, and trying to get to a destination, his is a GPS that uh, uh, helps you get there. It's thorough. It covers the, the time leading up to the divorce negotiations, um, what you can do for yourself what you can do for your children and how to uh, co-parent communicate effectively in a challenging environment after divorce. It, it does. And there's, it's divided into 46 different tips and strategies. And I would say your listeners will, will see themselves in 30 of them. So <laughs> right. um, anyhow, so uh, I was really humbled by that, Brian, because this is somebody who wrote successful books herself. She's right. a, a leading co-parent counselor and um and an author and she said your book just does something that said you rock <laughs> yeah you rock <laughs> so so um all right well uh, andy i know you've got a really hard uh break coming up here in just a couple a uh, couple seconds so i, I want to let you know uh and let uh listeners know all the links that we've talked about here they you can find them on the show notes uh on on your podcast of choice and uh, I will have as many of the links to all of Andy's stuff there. So I want to go ahead and let you uh, go, Andy, so you can get to your next uh, next stop. And I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for coming over. Thanks for agreeing to uh, to come over. And thanks for the actually reaching out and saying, hey, I think you might be a good uh, be a good fit. And I'm because you are you're an amazing fit and a great, great uh, information there, man. And uh, Andy, you take care of yourself. All right, Brian, it's a pleasure. Anytime you want me back, it'd be my honor.
Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, then, guys, y'all take care. Y'all know where to where to find us. And till uh, till next week, y'all go out and uh, and take on the day. And we'll talk to you then. All right. Bye.